Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Zunigami. With me is the lovely, the gorgeous Ichi Badass, and this is the very first episode of Make Things Monday, the podcast that's built right here in quarantine because I needed a reason to show things off and I want to see what you guys are capable of showing off. So the whole idea of Make Things Monday is every single week at 5 p.m. Central. We're going to go live. We're going to have a different guest with us every single time. And we are going to talk about things that the two of us are doing in our creative lives. And then we're going to review things that you are doing in your creative lives. So if there is something that you would like us to look at, art, music, um, something crafty cosplay videos streams maybe you're also streaming or making a podcast for the very first time share it in the make things monday channel on discord and we're going to review them after we talk a little bit about ourselves but hello eg badass hi it's gr- it's so doing? good to meet you is it is it really yes is this, is this our first time is this like- it's it's a gr- it's great meeting you i i've heard Digitally. so much about you <laughs> yeah, whatever you heard is probably not true, but it's true. So let's let's start off before we get the rest of things started off with uh, what are we drinking? Water and Ooh. coffee. Coffee. I was gonna make coffee, but I have no water. I mean, no milk. <laughs> <laughs> I have no that's milk. That's what you get dehydrated creamer for. No, that's disgusting. I hate dehydrated creamer. Bro, I am lactose intolerant. So for me to like I'm mildly lactose milk, intolerant, but like the farts are worth it. Dehydrated creamer, bro. It, no. it looks and tastes just like how it's it does not taste, taste at <laughs> all like milk or cream or half and half. It does not. I today am drinking tea with my favorite dinosaur. Uh, tea seeper. It's a little Loch Ness dinosaur tea seeper, and it is the best Christmas gift I've ever gotten. It was. It's super adorable. I, I, I can actually see that now. This is great. Instead yeah. of this being like one sided, where you guys can see me, but I can't see Z. What's I had to the, open up your stream. What's the difference? Oh, because because. Oh uh, no! Not I guess I have to deal with a fifteen actually. second delay now. It's fifteen seconds. You can like, deal with it. Pick my nose. <clears throat> All right, Ichi badass. What do you do? So I make adult Very not safe for work. <laughs> Very adult. Very lewd. I, I, I stream six days a week playing video games on Twitch. Wow. And I, you I can think, make money doing that? It. Well, so making money is illegal. <laughs> that's called counterfeit. I like to think of it as tips. What about donations? What can we can we call them that? No, you can't call them donations no. unless you're a charitable organization and writing like then it's. But people still do. Written off like tax free. Oh yeah, they do it all the time. It's actually a better buzzword to use the word donation than it is tip. It does sound because better. when people think of like oh yeah like because when people Who's think of tips they think of it's our like podcast episode one flawlessly. Yeah. What are you looking for? Your, your, your glasses guest. are certainly not here on my desk. Say hi, Ichi. Hi, waifu. He you got your stickers. Yay. They're fantastic. <laughs> They're really good. Uh, if I ever have oh. to show this as a pilot to get pet guests on, it's going to go terribly. <laughs> like, no one's going to look at this pilot and think like, wow, now that's a podcast I definitely want to be on. <laughs> that's, that's why you edit out the good parts of, like, the introduction and, like, the, the no, they, no, we got to give it to them like raw. The people want it live and raw. Sure. Sure. See, they want it raw. It's it's better that way. It's riveted, riveting, riveted content for your pleasure. Oh, wait, I thought I thought that's what the, the ribs are for, for his and her. Yeah, yeah the Mick ribs are Mick ribs for her pleasure. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so, so this is Make Things Monday. Also, you could just call it like what MTM, which makes me think of like matchmaking. Why? I, I don't know. I think like the MT makes me think of like matchmaking for some reason. Like male to male matchmaking. Mm, I don't. I don't know what usually MTM is used for. What's what? Like 
how what is how is that matchmaking? I get it now. Get it up. What is the first thing? Well, MM, MM. MTM. MTM Healthcare Services. Medical Transportation Management. Market to mark to market. Market to market. Ma mark Usually it's B two B, business to business. Yeah, sales, or like, like FTM, that. farm to market. Mark to market is a method of measuring the fair value of accounts that can be that can fluctuate over time, such as assets and liabilities. That whatever mm -hmm. that means. So, to get back on track, the whole idea here is Ichi. What is something? that you've been doing lately? Is it something stream related, something not stream related? Making something. You yeah. know, you brought up the concept of the podcast to me like a few days ago, right? Or was it last week? It was a, it was a literal week ago. Okay, what it was, was like it? Tuesday a week ago. I haven't made squat between Christmas and Christmas. Look, they don't need to know they don't need to know when you made this because for all the everyone here, they've never seen potentially stuff you've done for. So just lie to them. Just pretend like this is something you've made recently. Does three years ago count? If I'm like, hey, guess what? I made crisp hand drawn Pokemon Christmas cards. Yeah. But I three also want to bring you on because I also want to include things that people are doing in the streamer world. So if you make a new transition slides things you're doing on your stream that you're doing to improve your stream anything that anything like that lately no no actually <laughs> 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 i already had that done uh, it's been a like, while i see i see you making new like, uh yeah, yeah. cute phasmo things while you're playing phasmo oh those those are those are fun the the extra viewer interact uh, interaction. Actually, it's more so moderator interaction because moderators can use chat commands and or members of the community, but I try to leave them out of it. Oh, um, is that how you're having a... those work? Mm hmm So it pulls ah. from chat's API to allow them to... Um... Actually, this is beneficial to you too, or I guess anybody who kind of streams. Yeah. So they're the text overlays that you use in OBS Studio, I maybe slobs, if you're using slobs, I'm sorry. But you can actually set text options to actually read from text documents. And you can have it where the Python code that is used for like uh, Ankbot, which is now known as Streamlabs bot, will actually take a written command and whatever text is customly added to that and write it to that text document. So then it'll then display on stream. That's why obviously you'd want a moderator or yourself only having access to it because they can literally put anything written on stream, right? But it allows people who have access to it to actually change the name of the ghost, um, the type ghost type on screen, uh, with the exception of the assets for actually the the uh, what's it called the evidence for like freezing temperatures, ghost writing, spirit box, etc. So, what are you doing for and the then, images there for that portion? Because I know you have images and text there. Um, so the images are all just cold images, generic stock images from the internet. Um, but I use the Stream Deck to manually input that. Now, supposedly there's a command that you can do with the stream deck within OBS or whatever that would actually clear that scene to like a default configuration. I'm not sure what that is yet. But it looks really nice because then it overlays the evidence with a 3D transform so it's angled so it looks more immersive, right? Like like a heads up display curvature to it. So then you have like, you know, the ghost name stuff on one side, then you have like the evidence displayed with um, an opacity filter applied to it with scan lines to kind of give you that retro 90s ghost hunter sort of like a you know crt display effect with the evidence and everything on it originally i tried it with like a camera overlay to make it look like you're in like a phasmophobia camera but the assets on it look like trash so yeah i'm live hi yeah love your if you are live look we'll uh we'll like finally remember also to do i see is this oh no this is not you this is from a while back that's you i accepted the squad stream invite Hey, for podcasts and what is the directory? Podcasts, podcasts and makers. And talk show, talk shows and podcasts. Oh, is it podcasts? Yeah. Oh, I think there's a crafters and makers directory, but it's literally no. dead. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I guess that will segue into Twitch killing the creative stuff. 
And... <laughs> Wait, this, that is not the focus of MTM, all right? Yeah, it's, complaining it's about politics. how Twitch it's killed creative. Leaking, leaking stuff, which actually some of the plugins that I just touched on, I know you're using that you recently grabbed, like the Move plugin. I don't know if you got the 3D Transform one. No, I did not. I know you grabbed like a that's whole how bunch you, of them. That's how you did the skew for some of your pieces. Mm -hmm. So you can add like depth to them, kind of. Yeah. And angle it and everything. And you can combine it with like the other transitions too. So it looks actually really super neat. Yeah, I'll have to play with some of those. So I recently converted back to uh, OBS from Streamlabs OBS. And by recently, I mean like mm -hmm. just just this week. Uh, and I used to really like Streamlabs OBS. When Streamlabs OBS was first launching, it, w it had a lot of potential to it. But it since I... then has gotten really bloated. So when when Slabs originally came out, because OBS Studio is open source anyways, right? Anybody can take yep. it, reverse engineer it, add things to it. It was kind of cool because the the interface was a little bit more interactive with the on-screen canvas. Mm -hmm. It was around the same time another company called Bebo was trying to do basically the same thing, um, which they have since then. They, they actually got sold to uh, Twitch believe it or not mm. um I, I i tried slobs i didn't like it i didn't like bebo either because it just i had been using obs classic up to like obs studio and it just was kind of meh right it, I, I don't i don't know so i mean i know a lot of people still use slobs and i there's a lot of plugins that just don't work on slobs the biggest benefit of slobs for a while is and it still doesn't exist in obs is the undo button when you're editing stuff, you can control Z in slobs, which... Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, anything that you move, you can... Yep. Wow, I can that's control actually... Z and undo. And I cannot tell you how much time that has saved me in, like, moving something, knowing, like, knowing that if I wanted to just, for a quick meme, just slap things around and, like, make my face move to a completely different area and then just Z, 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 go back to where it was before. And, like, like that's it. If I want to just do something stupid for five seconds and not like as a permanent change to my overlay just why 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 don't you just group assets together or nest them because then if i drag if i change a position it won't go back true like if right now what i if i if i wanted to say right now switch our names like drag mine mm -hmm. over to your spot drag your spot over to mine i could do that in obs but to undo that i would have to drag them back and reposition them in the same spots and there's no way for yeah. me to just control Z, control Z and undo them. So there's still no plugin that does that for OBS Studio. Um, um actually there is a I've... plugin. There is? Yeah. So there's a plugin that would actually allow you to it, it's it's not as simple as you know control Z, but what it would do is it actually allows you to take an asset and set an on screen uh xyz position for it so when you actually hit the plugin to use it on your stream deck it will move that asset there so basically if you took both the the, the names over our heads assets and set up that plugin with it you can then press the button to like shift them over and then sh press it again to shift it back it's honestly i mean you wouldn't use it for that anyways. yeah but there's there's it doesn't undo all the other things like if i add change like throw up meme filters and mm -hmm. size and stuff like yeah. that it just doesn't give me the simplicity of control Z. And uh, yeah, I was that's sticking around kinda... in slobs for a while just because of control Z. Like, I that's... really like control Z and it's so convenient. Yeah, that is super convenient. And I'm just, I've been like holding off. It's like, well, maybe whenever OBS Studio, someone makes a control Z plugin or one of the major updates gives a control Z plugin, then I'll slide back. But there's just been so many plugins that initially were promised to be coming out to Streamlabs OBS. Like a lot yeah. of the initial idea between Streamlabs OBS is like we'll be able to integrate some of the plugins that are in OBS Studio into Slavs and then have some of these like mood transitions that we're using right now. But none of those are available in Streamlabs OBS. Yeah. So since Slavs doesn't have any of those, time to go back to Studio. I mean, I think it's because like what their own personal team is the one like copy pasting all these plugins where since OBS Studio is open source, you know, independent individuals, you know, 
devs are making plugins to use with the open source software, they're not going to go through the trouble of like having to go through the additional loopholes, no, not loopholes, jumping through hoops to make it work on slobs too. Look, wait, what I'm basically saying is ever since Streamlabs sold out to Logitech, they haven't been the same. <laughs> oh. That's... I mean, uh, they were kind of whatever beforehand, but I used to like I used to know a lot of the Streamlabs team, but a lot of them have a lot of the people that I knew who at Streamlabs have left since the acquisition. Oh, that's not cool. Okay. Um, it's I don't think it was because of the acquisition, but just having mm -hmm. just since then they've left the team or like uh, change of management and stuff like that because it's being acquired by yeah larger corporation yeah yeah like to be expected mm -hmm. so i don't have i don't have any cool friends at Streamlabs anymore we'll only have a few and look what i'm saying is they're not important to me anymore so they don't matter so now time to ditch it and go back to obs studio i i, I mean i swear by a studio but i still yeah, i like it <laughs> i'll still use tools from like Streamlabs because you know they acquired the chat bot which is unkbot which was what it was originally called was, before was they sold it. was quite, quite stellar. And I, uh, Ankbot mm -hmm. was one of them that I suggested them acquire <laughs> to make Streamlabs chatbot. So. I mean, you have, the, the only thing that was actually originally better than Ankbot was Deepbot because it had more features than and Ankbot Deepbot was did. the paid version of Ankbot. Mm -hmm. It was a it slightly, it was, had a few more features and was a paid version of Ankbot. We were going back into like eight years ago stream time. Like, Deepbot hasn't this, been around for five years. This this is now Make Your History Monday. <laughs> yeah. We're, go, we're going back to, to Twitch history, if you remember what Deepbot even was. These, these these are tools that make your stream better. Stream think, elements like didn't exist back, right can't, back then. Like, stream elements as a company did not exist. Mm, I, mean, I don't think it did, but it could have. Because, like, like what, for example, what is that? Muxy. Which yeah, Muxy was around. one. Of, was the it was basically your alerts companies were Twitch alerts, mm -hmm. which what which is what I, what the company used to be called before Streamlabs before Twitch shut them down with that. Uh, Twitch alerts. Did they and, really? Mm -hmm. I thought they just rebranded because of they wanted the added accessibility of YouTube, Facebook, Mixer. Possibly et that that could have possibly it. I also very much see it as a uh, Twitch coming out and. Uh, strong arming their brand into saying this is not Twitch, and so you can't use our brand in your name. Because uh, Twitch has done some similar things to community meetup groups. If you are a oh yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. official oh, yeah. Twitch community meetup group, you're not allowed to use Twitch in the username. Yeah, so it's like Twitch restricted. Right? Yeah, it's not it's not copyrighted because Twitch as a word is in reference to the movement of you know possibly but then that's not the american copyright system the american copyright system works in different ways mm -hmm. okay so con continuing with more things that make make streams i guess at this point is the focus yeah i know uh, you've been working on um and what i'm going to be doing after today after our after the podcast and talking portion of the stream today because if you're watching this on youtube then you're just going to get the podcast with ichi and i and that's going to be it but if you're live on twitch what i'm going to be doing every monday is after the podcast i'm just going to be doing whatever project that i'm working on for the rest of my monday when i'm usually playing games for the rest of the week monday is just going to be doing my project and i have two things you might notice the colorful wheel back here mm -hmm. and i stole this from my parents because they got it for the bar and they have not used it. And I, I literally was visited my parents for the holidays at this art sports bar. And they had this on the stage. And I was like, hey, what are you doing with that big color wheel? <laughs> Can I take it? And so I took it. Mine. And it doesn't have any pegs in it, which is unfortunate because, like, I want to spin it here and go, kak, 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 you could just use thumbtacks, multicolored thumbtacks, basic to just. Do well, the I could, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna one. get um, dowel rods and just glue the dowel rods to it, because uh, mm -hmm. it's got a plexiglass cover cover to it. I don't want to have to try to thumbtack through plexiglass, so I'm gonna take dowel oh. rods, put the <clears throat> dowel rods into into 
inch long sticks stick them on there but that's for another time T today just cleaning up and showing off that we're gonna have one of these things so that way i've got my many colorful markers here to write on it for whatever weird donation goal stream things that streamers do spin is like oh twerk for 30 seconds i don't know whatever it is like whatever you kids want what, these days what's what's twerk twerking can you can you give me an example on stream uh twerking is uh it's that alien race in um that in that star star battles show with the tentacle hair oh, is that right yeah okay. that's that's a twerk the twerk mm -hmm. oh okay okay those wheels those i love streamers with wheels whether it's a physical one or a digital one because it just you have one i do i have a digital one from oh, streamlabs okay. I don't like the look of it. I don't like the look of the Streamlabs one. It's okay, and it makes sounds. You spin it, you can actually assign it to the but Stream Deck. But you could so get you a physical one just like this, and it would be so much more fun. You could wheel it out. What I and always I wanted, put it away. What I always wanted is to have doohickeys stuck to my ceiling so I can, like, pull something down, <laughs> like... Like from the ceiling here, just like, hey, it's the wheel time. Just like pull it down from here. The wheel just like hangs and I like zip it back uh -huh. up. And it would look visually a mess up there. But from this side, it'd be really cool. And that's something I want. <clears throat> wheel and then pull it back up. That That's, I mean, that's great too. But that's like nowadays with streaming and everything, that's part of the magic of having a green screen for the immersion of like no, bringing No, but like I, like, I like the physicality of things. Like I know I could do things digitally, but the physicality yes. of things is just so much more fun having a physical wheel. And then like, it's like the counterculture of like green screen magic. It's like, no, I want real life stuff. Mm -hmm. And the second project I'm working on- a bigger studio. Also, you didn't turn off autofocus on your webcam. Yeah. <laughs> it does that. Do I have it on still? Here, look. Boop. Mm -hmm. There. Now it's off. I just watch your camera occasionally just, like, go out of focus. Yeah, that yeah. The, the good old Logitech Pulse. Mm -hmm. This is the second project that I have. I have a foam company that sent me a bunch of foam, acoustic foam, and... Mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to make a sponsored video for them a while back. <laughs> but now, I, I have a question about that foam. Now, is the foam actually like sound dampening or is that just remo removing the reverb? Because normally you use foam to remove the echo effect in a room. Yes. So not for soundproofing. It's sound dampening and reverb absorption is similar. It's not for mm -hmm. soundproofing though. No, so no, things will sound not. exactly the same outside this room as inside this room, but it removes a lot of the tinniness from the room. It changes a room from that. If you are a normie and you're thinking about this, it's like going into your closet and you have those hushed sounds whenever you're in your closet with all your clothes hanging versus in an empty auditorium or an empty classroom or empty school hallway when it's all echoey and tinny. Whenever you click something, you can hear that. Mm-hmm. And so if you think of like a hardwood empty house or like you walk into a house for the first time and there's no furniture, there's nothing, it's really empty. It has that really lonely feeling. That's what all the acoustic foam is for. And it makes a huge difference in whether or not you have acoustic foams in the walls or not. Um, just like it also looks a lot better foams. than sound dampening blankets and stuff. Yeah, sound dampening blankets makes you look like a uh, voice actor podcaster who is just doing stuff in their bedroom. But yeah. uh, so I have these, I have uh, this blue color and the same color back here. And I'm going to change it up from being this square grid to being a uh, diamond grid of patchwork colors. So we're going to go blue, black, 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 blue, black, black, black. So that's what we're going to do. And the acoustic foam always looks pretty dang good. Honestly. Yeah, I, li I like the, the look of acoustic foam. I think acoustic foam looks good and I like... Now that I have two colors, I get to do it in a diamond pattern, two color, instead of just like the one color grid I have back there. Mm -hmm. And the toughest thing about this stuff is that if you, depending on the paint that you have on your walls, it's easier annoying to put up and put down. So my paint on my walls is like waxy. And so 
Like, even 3M tape doesn't stick to the walls very well. It has nothing to do with, like, the fault of the foam companies and how they suggest you put on the walls. But I had the solutions that I had are, like, get spray on glue and spray it on and permanently glue into walls. I'm like, I really don't want to do that. Uh, but the solution I found that does work is taking a, a push pin thumbtack and just sticking it in the middle of it. And that worked out perfect. Really? Yeah. So I just, I literally have, if you were to look in very, very closely to the center of all these, there's just a single push pin that sticks them to the walls. And it works perfect. I actually, I actually see one because it, it looks like a, basically a pixel on your camera. Yeah. It just looks like a tiny dot. On some of these, and you see a little push oh, pin. Oh, I stick them to there, and it works out great. It's just a clear push pin, um, and if you don't tell people, nobody will know. Mm-hmm. That's creative. I've heard of like the glue, the command strips, the taking a piece of cardboard with command strips. Yeah, or like glue, glue them. I, I I like yeah. the idea of like gluing them to cardboard and then taking the t- cardboard and using a cardboard to stick them to the wall, so you have a bit more of a flat surface to flat surface than porous surface to flat surface. Uh, Mm -hmm. so you can glue these foam boards that are porous just actually permanently glue them to cardboard so you get a hard backing on them then you take that hard back to the walls and then you can use something that's gentle in the walls to put them up but my problem is the walls not the foam is I I've always been interested in like acoustic foam and stuff like that but not to the point of actually using it myself normally the alternative is if you have enough furniture especially like actual like a bed couch clothing etc they help to like you know absorb the sound right to reduce the reverb etc especially carpets and rugs do a fantastic job of that but um, one company makes basically it's the acoustic foam very high on acoustic foam that's on like a canvas essentially a a foam panel yeah it's basically it's a foam panel but a simpler way of like a DIY is you can do the same thing with a canvas and just basically like putting up pictures on the wall. You just put in a single screw or nail, mm-hmm. right? And you can actually just put them up as a full, you know. So I like the foam panel. paneling. Uh, the foam paneling also lets you like if you want to put colorful fabric on it, then you can mm-hmm. customize colorful fabric to be whatever it is that hangs on your wall. And it just looks like a rectangle fabric art piece. But... It's going to be, you're going to want it to be about two or three inches thick and have acoustic foam behind that fabric paneling. And it's just thick acoustic foam panels in there. Uh, if you think of, if you think of in high school, your band room in high school probably had things similar to this, where there were acoustic panels in there, where they're just rectangles jutting out of the wall mm-hmm. or an auditorium. There are a lot of times these what are made to look like art pieces, but really they're acoustical panelings that are made to absorb some of those high-end tinny sounds to that way the other sounds. Reduces that echoing and reverbs, so that way the sounds sound a lot better. Oh, yeah. Thick curtains, blackout curtains also work great. Um, and depending on how much foam I have left over, what I might also make is a podcasting basket or a voice, a voice acoustic cone. So here's a trick that I saw. You take a bunch of your acoustic foam panels that you have, or yeah, acoustic foam panels or just foam rectangles, whatever you have that you're using for your acoustic foam, and you get a laundry basket, a circular laundry basket, maybe like a foot deep. And then you line the laundry basket with the foam. And then you slice that plastic basket open so you can wrap it around your microphone. And so now you've made a small closet for your microphone where it's surrounded by acoustic foam and you can easily take it on and off with your laundry basket. So that way, if you ever want to do podcasting or something like that and you want, you don't want to do your entire room or you want the mm-hmm. extra sound absorption for, that you want to use for voice acting to make sure you don't have any of that, you wrap this around your microphone use that for this it doesn't it looks hideous as heck so you're not going to use it for like your a streaming setup <laughs> right, where you have like right, a right, literal yeah. basket here in front of your microphone but whenever your video doesn't matter and all you're doing is voice acting a voiceover or a podcast or something like that where people can't see then you can pull out the good old basket throw it on to really dampen out and get all those deep tones in your voice i've i've seen i've, I've never heard of that one 
which that one actually sounds really great. But I've seen it where, like, you know how, like, those project boards that you do for, like, a school science fair sort of deal, right? For, like, dream boarding or whatever. It's usually, like, a fold-out cardboard display. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it where you actually do the same thing with the acoustic foam to set it up to, like, give you a small recording space to help yeah. remove, like, the background sounds and stuff like that. Especially if you're dealing with issues like re reverb and everything. That's why also... You can basically do audio recording in a closet because the the small confined space that you can easily control or even condition the sound of the space and then your clothes also like helps out too for soundproofing and removal of reverb. Yeah. If you want to get a raw natural sound recording instead of you just artificially add the reverb anyways, if you need it. All right, Ichi, any other projects that you're working on right now? Honestly, no. It's pretty much just between doing like overlay stuff for OBS for the additional interaction for like example, like Phasmophobia. There's not much you can really do with like Among Us aside from like proximity voice chat. Um, no. All right. I let's... do want to start doing more of the YouTube stuff for going into like next year's transition and what's it called? TikTok. Wait. I thought TikTok was illegal in the United States now. <laughs> was it wasn't that supposed to be like revisited in like January or some crap like that? I don't I don't know. Some something about Well look, we'll see what happens whenever we have the new American situation. Oh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see how twenty twenty part two actually like treats us guys, cause you know, that's just three days away. We all right, watch this. Whoa, that's the first time we're showing off that transition. And you might notice that some of this overlay actually moves with us. Like you, you notice that some of these, the, the borders for our cameras, fly off in awkward ways. That's because these. Uh, Separate. I, I need a, I need to slice them up and move them apart so that way they stick to the webcam instead of like flying off to the side. But you won't, you won't know that. If you if you just nested the webcam scenes with the the overlay then yes it would stick together that's what better. i also considered but i also don't want to make i'm too lazy to make like that many yeah, message scenes nested, yeah. yeah i i'm i'm going to be making a lot of message scenes for memes mm -hmm. um and i don't want those two extra just webcams like i'm just gonna the, make, i have the graphic already i all literally all i need to do is just slice up the overlay and move the individual pieces instead of having it the one piece because right now this overlay this entire thing is just one piece and I yeah. can just slice it up, make them separate pieces, and have them fly to where I want them to mm -hmm. separately. But hey, this is how the, the second half of Make Things Money is going to work. Uh, Ichi Badass has been my guinea pig and joining me along for this very first trial run. And so if there are things that you want us to share and Make Things Monday, the only rule is to keep it safe for work so I don't get banned. That's that's basically yeah. the rules. Keep that's, things that's, that'd, that'd be safe cool. for work is all. Um and see what I can do if I if I like more clever is I can just uh like open up a a separate Chrome window over here, and then uh, I can just like preview the thing. Like here, oh, oh my God, it's it's Asher Crasher's thing now. He has put it on a white background, three D thing model on a white background, so you can like barely see it. But it's like a Halloween Bulbasaur 3D model. Yeah, I see that. That's actually pretty neat. Yeah. I know Asher's been working on 3D stuff in his college. So he's been mm -hmm. working on a lot of that stuff. Uh, one of our other friends, Mooney's game that he's developing right now. This is a mobile game that they've been developing for like four years. And it's never going to come out. I have one major problem with this game and I've been asking for this feature for a long time, but as these girls get damaged, their clothes don't come off. And as you upgrade <laughs> them, their clothes don't come off. So I don't see the point in playing my, the anime Gasha game. If I'm playing an anime Gasha game with waifus and when I level them up and evolve them, their character, their clothes don't get skimpier. What's the point? You gotta, you gotta do something to make it stand out. We've all seen anime girls. We've seen a lot of too many anime girls. We, we, we've seen a lot. <laughs> we, we've seen all the anime girls. Far, far too many. Uh, here's the, my the screenshot panels are are great. 
Oh yeah, he, he has he has some good. They they have a lot of good stuff. They've even already taken this to a lot of cons and shows. They were at Anime Expo last year and about a lot of other Texas conventions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lily Peach is in the game. Hey. Yeah, Lily Peach is an anime girl in that game. Here's my brother making that the same podcasting setup that we're talking about, where you this PVC pipe frame is gonna have curtains draped all over it, mm-hmm. so you can make a little podcasting booth. So you can use it for music. Yeah, I wonder. Um, so for optimization, right? Mm-hmm. Doing the the laundry basket slash project board sound dampening setup versus an actual like, because I know he's making basically a podcaster booth, um, with preferably noise isolating. Uh, fabric which those aren't cheap if you're actually doing it proper right yeah well they're, like they're, they're really... not as expensive as acoustic foam to make really yeah because if acoustic foam paneling depending on where you get it from it's several dollars per panel mm-hmm. like if you get it i think most of my paneling i got a long time ago i got on a deal for like two dollars a panel i got i think 60 60 panels for a hundred something yeah. So it's about I mean, two dollars per panel. Same same price basically when what you can get on like Amazon and stuff. Yeah. Uh but those and aren't like the like many same things buy in bulk, grade. it's cheaper. The, oh, the yeah. paneling it is the or the foam it is. And if you want to get the acoustic dampening curtains, it's cheaper to get the curtain than it is to get foaming for an entire room. Unless you have a very small room. Yeah, I could I could agree with that. Cause like if you were to panel every square foot of your room, oh my god, just do a closet. Just That's also a thing about the foam is that closet. you don't need to panel everything. Like the empty yeah, space on the side, it's all right. And if you want to, if you want to be really extra, that's when you panel everything. And you also get the side pieces, the really thick side pieces to capture some of the corner sounds. If you want to be super super extra. But I yeah, or can do the acoustic blanket and hang it as like a net on the ceiling to help. Yeah, it it really comes down to like how well you understand sound design and how sound works in that given space to hit those hot spots. If you, depending on what your goal is, basically for you know the the vocals that you're trying to record and or music, right? If you actually wanted to make an actual studio recording space, um. For most consumer grade stuff, most starter streamers, etc., they don't need a fifteen thousand dollar studio booth. Look, Zergling Boss's room is already green, so like, look, you already have your green screen set up. <laughs> Everything's already green. It's, you've already green screened your entire room. Why do you Why do you need a setup for it? That's your rig right there. This This is another piece from Asher Crasher that. Is this one's old? Okay, Asher, don't don't you can't fool me. I you've shown this to us before in our art channel, and I know I've seen this before. It's a work in progress. You show sneaky, and tell. sneaky boy. Now, something that I remember him doing back then that I definitely see is uh, this this piece of art and art that you see from a lot of oh, well, what's this? Um, more amateur artists. Mm. is tracing and you can definitely see tracing whenever you're whenever you see someone like doing an overlay trace of art to try to learn it Mm -hmm. Uh, and while you're learning artwork it's tracing is a not okay place to start but the faster you can get away from it the faster you can try to learn how to do spacing without having to rely on tracing and overlaying a piece art a to a piece it 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 helps out a lot it is a very delicate balance for the newbie artist when it comes to tracing and, to and tracing is it's very very tempting to mm-hmm. i want to make something simple and i want to learn how to draw. but it's very obvious when somebody does do tracing though because so then the proportions the lighting like certain certain portion like what is the best way to the word that it's like you can tell because like the proportions of the character won't be right. The shading especially 
for like shading any depth usually of like isn't nose eyes whenever someone's tra whenever i i can tell that someone's tracing is usually black and white and mm -hmm. what i see is that i can tell from how you're drawing your lines that you aren't mm -hmm. confident in your line drawing and what mm -hmm. you're doing is you're trying to match up your hand movements and your line drawings to what you're exactly seeing on the paper and so what happens is your line gets a lot of judders and stutters and, and, and stutters in you trying to slowly and meticulously copy the line that you're seeing. And what you're doing is you're copying what you're seeing rather than copying what you're trying to, and rather than drawing what you are actually trying to draw. So instead of yeah. trying to draw a curve, what you should be doing, what you end up doing is trying to trace that line and you get these ugly judders that you see a lot in amateur tracing. Yeah. But I mean it's 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 part of it. Like tracing is it's okay. That's why yeah, it's like, a learning process, it's... but the faster you can get away from it, and the faster you can even when you're doing the next step is just have it side by side. Just have what you're referencing to the side and trying to mm -hmm. draw that. But then really trying to envision why am I drawing these lines? What is this line representing on the paper? and making sure you're doing your strokes with confidence. Confidence in your strokes, just like confidence in real life, makes everything look really good. And mm -hmm. if you're doing clean, confident strokes, that makes a world of a difference in how your art looks. Mm -hmm. All right, here is Tentacle Honey, who's uh, got a lovely name. And Tentacle Honey's got some stickers from Genjin Impact. You've seen these before. I think they're all, are they all catified? I see Deluxe got cat ears. Or I think Deluxe's the only one with cat ears. Well, it's a bunch of stickers. Really? They look like it. I, lo I love stickers. Stickers are Stickers are like, great. Did you know so that good. you can get your own stickers from Janice by typing in exclamation <laughs> stickers in chat? They look like this. Oh my God. Where's, where's your electric mouse, Ichi? Like downstairs. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I would you'd have you would be making me go all the way down there just to get my electric mouse sticker oh my god you're like you're like your camera was like dissolving there for a second that was interesting oh that was super weird yeah i think it's because i'm like doing an output of your stream through the capture card and stuff like that yeah i don't know what it is um but i know that something helpful. that tentacle is doing that jance and i when we first started making stickers we did this for one day and i told her i'm not doing this anymore and they're cutting out their stickers manually by hand oh instead of using a either the two popular cutters are the silhouette and the cricket or cry cut i don't know how it's pronounced everyone pronounces it differently but the cricket and the silhouette are two machines that will do this cutting out for you but they're doing it by hand and it is such a pain it is not worth it especially when you're only selling the stickers for like two to five bucks a piece depending on size and whatever yeah like hand hand yeah. cutting stickers <clears throat> Ugh, i hate it yeah. i'll never do it again i did it one day and that was it oh now it's time for my favorite piece of work here yeah each your what's your opinion on this I, I, I love this one i think though that the 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 sfw overlay needs to be removed but let me change scenes first yeah um i can i can dm you the the other version <laughs> uh nice, she really. has she has several pieces of jewelry on one piece of jewelry that you can't see it's under her shirt it connects two points on the body <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, you can't you can't see that right now, but it connects. It, it's so it connects. this is this is where we rebrand the uh, the podcast from "Make Things Monday" to "Make Me Moist Monday." Mm. <laughs> Too many M's. No, the the the, the you know the, the the like the the jingle right is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, so I made an addition to this art piece. I don't know if you can tell which addition I personally made to this piece. But it, I I added a little something to help uh, enhance the art. Clear, clearly, the, uh, the 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 Christmas sweater, right? Uh, y no, I added I added the the girl, the whole the entire girl. 
I drew that oh, whole you, piece by myself. The, the, the girl, the girl was your addition. Yeah, entirely, entirely my mine, and not no, so, not so Janice. This work. is supposed to be a lewd dinosaur, is what we're we're looking the at. The dinosaur right? is in lewd. Don't get don't say don't say the dinosaur is lewd. This is the the OC of a friend of ours who uh, transforms into a dinosaur, I believe, and that's that's like part of why that dinosaur is there. But it's Janice's first oh. lewd, truly lewd commission. And so it's it's time that trans, Janice is transforming into a hentai artist. So if you want hentai of your favorite characters, hit me up and we can talk. I'm not even joking. I can finally not actually joke about that. I can actually be serious when it's like, hey, do you want hentai drawn of your characters? I can help. And I can actually mean it now. Great. I showed this to my mom. And you know what my mom's reaction was? You should draw it of the you should draw it of the people getting the commissions. It's like, wait, what? It's like, yeah, you should draw them. So like each if you commission, it's like, I'm gonna draw a lewd version of you. And this is her logic. This is my mom's logic here. A lot of my friends are old women now, and they want to remember themselves when they were young and hot. So they want okay. drawings of themselves with cute bodies back when they were young and hot and then we went on like a 10 minute tangent where she's going through like a bunch of pictures of her friends and like look how cute her face is but she's fat now <laughs> and like look 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 she puts, puts filters on her face so she's cute but she's uh -huh. fat and and i know that she'd want a picture of her looking really hot and sexy <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's you know that that's a, that's a good like, niche market. To... Yeah, but then like honestly, then we'd have to envision the people commissioning us naked, and that opens up an entire can of worms because the type of people to get lewd commissions are not the type of people I want to think of naked. Oh, no. well, that's why that's why they basically go through a catalog of stuff that Janice has already done, right? Yeah, but we, we still go, like, we have to add their face there, and that means that means the entire time you're drawing, you have to think about them naked. And I like if they want like a ten inch schlong, I'm gonna have to be thinking about their ten inch schlong the entire time. And then what if they're like, no, I want it to be like a twelve inch schlong, right? Mm -hmm. And then now I gotta now I gotta add two more that, inches that to it. It's to be, ridiculous. That has to be perspectively accurate. Too, yeah, for research purposes. And will I will we ever make a schlong that they are truly happy with? It's it's too hard, or maybe it's not hard enough. It's not hard enough. And so that that's my mom's contribution is that we should draw <laughs> we should draw them themselves naked. That's that that's why we have Snapchat and Instagram <laughs> filters. Like, come on now. Uh. That that is that's fantastic. I love that. So that's your mom's contribution to make things Monday. It is. We should draw. We should draw people naked. Cool. So it, here it's... is Inner Demons artwork. Mm -hmm. Now is this an OC or is this supposed to be based off of something? I'm not sure, but it does look like markers, or it mm -hmm. it, it partially looks like watercolor. And markers with yeah. insane scribbles on it. Inner demons, inner demon, has the worst spelling of the word inner I've ever seen in my life. My inner demon, my Myanar demon. Your name is Myanar. That's not how you spell my inner. It's Myanar. It's, it, you know, it's just missing an L. And we have a few new ones. You still have time if you want to show off some stuff that you're working on. Wait, there's there's new submissions. Yeah, there's new submissions. These were these were submitted just now. And so we still have time. If you want us to to check things out, you want to share things for Make Things Monday. You still go into the Make Things Monday channel on Discord and share things there, so we can talk about it here. This one, Wiki Das Pedias, Pedias, Wiki is their name. Wiki, 3D model of a treehouse, low poly style. The fewer polys you have, the better grade you get. Kinda. Okay, it's for school. Oh, this is an apparel. You're a man. Sure. I mean, I consider myself a boy, not a man, but you know, that's what you do. 
Janice, Janice, yeah, send me your your uh yeah, not copyrighted not copyrighted. You're, you're gonna love this one, Ichi. It's so good. Jan, Jan, send us your not copyrighted characters so we can show it off because I don't have it on my my Discord to pull up. So I think I only have it on Facebook and I don't feel like pulling up Facebook right now. That's that's a great way to dox yourself. Yeah. I have a little Facebook before. I'm just too lazy to do it now. Hmm. When I was doing 3D modeling in school, also, hey, look, this is my this is my opinions on this treehouse. It's so low poly, it's missing the entire backside. It ends at the door. There's there's steps going up to the door and there's a door, but you've accidentally removed too many polygons on your low poly model and you've forgotten the rest of the house. Yeah, at least the side. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's missing the tree too, but you know that's why it's a school project. It's it's a work in progress, a whip. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it does still something that they're of, working on as a project. It reminds me a little of um, I don't know if you remember there was an there was an edutainment game that involved it was like one of those jumpstart edutainment games, but it was a Halloween themed one and there was a bat that talked all funny as your entire time every all the characters really weird looking I can't remember the name of it at all uh, but every single building and stuff had all these like really fun crookedy cricks and stuff like that like the models and stuff and I like a lot of these like weird crookedy crick models yeah I think that you see a lot of these crookedy cricks crickiness in like these the fire here and this sign here but I think the house looks too plain compared to that. But we'll see what the rest. I mean, of it. it's definitely it's definitely contrasting, but yeah. Oh, and that's not the only thing they have. They have more. But wait, there's more. Is it really? Yeah, this is also from them, and this looks like a bleach character. <laughs> it does look <laughs> like a bleach character, or or inspired by um, One Piece. Mm, no, it's, it's, he's not a pirate. Style. He's not a pirate. Look, he's got a he's barcode got, he's got on his head. He's got gold. He's got a barcode on his head. That's that's too too modern for for One Piece. Jumpstart Haunted he's Island is the very game. Thanks, brother. Oh, he's wow. a mercenary cyborg. That explain the glowing eyes. Yeah, I like. I like a lot of this, but the the hand looks like it was stung by a bee. Hands are super hard to puffy? draw. Yeah, it's a little puffy. So, you know, that's his, you know, he's right-handed, right? And just, you know, he's got big hands. Yeah. And his arm is also not as thick as his bo the rest of his muscly body implies. His arm is skinnier than his body is. His body, he's got this guy's ripped, right? This, look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at the center of his torso. This guy's ripped, but his arm's frail. He needs more muscles on this arm. This arm needs to be thick, like the rest of him. Yeah, the the bicep for his right arm is actually needs to be thicker, especially in proportion to the forearm. So yeah. when I did boxing and racquetball and a variety of additional classes, like. That's basically how I would look. And your arms are definitely bigger. Wait a so, second. Like, Wait a second. Wait a second. Time out. I could, Can I, could I see the blade of his sword there? Is his sword not in a sheath? Is he just is he just got the sword stuck to the side of his body? Maybe. Maybe I the think, sheath wraps I, around I think that's him. a blade. I think I see the sword's blade there's, right there's, there. There's, 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 there's no sheath blade. there. It's a white sheath. Okay. All right, fine. <laughs> I just thought that was a very unsafe way to carry a sword. It's a white sheath? <laughs> really? But the but, rest of him but, isn't white at all. Well, There's like but, no other white. I want a gold sheath. Why, why is why is the sheath two-toned? Like a blade. <laughs> uh, that's, is that even... it's, it's, it's a square sheath. It's still a fun piece, though. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I, I, Good job. I I love I love artwork stuff, and I know for a fact that you appreciate it and understand it that much more, especially with Janice. 
because I'm sure she'd be like, hey, look at this. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I love critiquing art because I can't draw art myself. But I can no. look at things and I like to critique it. Mm-hmm. Like, like what is his arm is actually his arm's like. actually missing from behind this sword. Is well, no, 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 no. His, his, his arm missing there. His biceps are small because you see the sky in the background. Well, so even look then, at the bottom the, of the entire bicep. arm is 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 thinner than it should be. Forearm and yes. and bicep. Yeah. Well, in pr- proportion to his hand, yes, his forearm. If his forearm, his forearm actually could stay that size based off of the angle. If the hand was smaller, but the bicep still has to be larger. Also, this guy's neck is thick. Like, I could take a chainsaw to that neck and there's no way it's slicing through. This guy is ripped. <laughs> Perspective is hard. And I, I say all these things as, overall, oh, well, this is a, is a very well done. This is very, very well done. But, I, but that's why you his, use damn, models. His, his, or... his neck is an entire tree trunk. Because, so, like, for example, his torso... Like to break it down, right? Um, wait, wait, the, wait, 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 yeah, Zoro's <laughs> One Piece Zoro also has a thick neck. Very thick. But yes, he has a small face, a thick neck. His deltoids are not developed in proportion to like Yeah, but we got but what about his things. glutes? The the important question. Gluteus. Alright, here's here's Asto's stream overlay they're working on. First mm-hmm. first thing Oh, are you an art stream? Or is that just a screenshot of MS Paint? It's just MS Paint for the this for the placeholder for the overlay, I believe. Stream always love to do podcasts somewhere or somehow, but I don't know where to start and ain't comfy with showing your face on any test would be cool. Uh step one, show your face. Showing your face is super important on stream right now. Um if if you're not, you can always do the new hot VTuber. thing, which is Yep, being a VTuber is a new hot thing. And then you get to hide your face then. But if you're not showing something for people to emotionally connect with on stream and in videos, it's so hard to build a community nowadays that you really just can't. And I would say that if you don't have something representing you and showing your emotions, either being a VTuber or showing your actual webcam, it's really hard to build a personal connection with an audience, especially with how completely overinflated streaming is. Mm-hmm. Over I mean, especially with 2020, more people have to get into it whether they like it or not and it's also um streaming helps with like the social disconnect that we are dealing with with this year because not only do you actually get to hear the person but you see them too um that's where this one fun streaming app i'll have to tell you about later would be cool because it actually allows you to put your friendos on stream more easily to see the reactions for like phasmophobia and stuff hmm Albeit, I think it runs at like an additional like fifteen percent resource stuff, kind of like using face rig or whatever facial recognition software. I was trying to use face rig for a while, but my my PC was not having it with, with some of the games I was running. So I was like, "All right, this is this that's, is not this is not playing along." That's that's intense. where it was interesting with um, me using face rig because I've used face rig for over five years now. Yeah, yeah. I've used it for a while. Um, if you don't optimize the settings, that thing will eat up to like 30 plus percent CPU usage. And that's with a an i7 um, 4790K. Um, even, even, you know, even with optimization, it will still run at about like 15% to 20% CPU usage on like the equivalent of a Ryzen 5 2600 or 3600. So it's always interesting to see somebody try to use face rig on a streaming single streaming rig pc because then they don't know what they're doing they just have their like tune up there and then they're playing something like call of duty or whatever and then their their stream just turns into a slideshow because they don't realize that they're you know you know killing the encoding which also remember to review your streams whenever you're done with them 
uh, Asta, with your if you, even if you don't have a, a stream room, even if your your background's messy or even if your background's not pretty, there's some cheats you can do. You can have a curtain that you pull out to kind of divide up the room to make things nicer. Just a little slide curtain you can just put it on t uh, two PVC pipe or three PVC pipe poles and just use that for a little while to make a little divider for yourself. Uh, nah, the easiest thing to do is you just put your back to the wall. Set yeah. up the streaming setup in a way that where your back is to a wall, and then you can either have a green screen or preferably make up the space to look nice. But I would I mean, say, and even objective, even a subpar webcam would be better than no webcam. I'd say, I agree. unless it's particularly bad, <laughs> unless you got but, like. Uh, but a webcam doesn't guarantee success either, but it does allow it for helps. people to actually like, if they want to click through and see your stream. When I see a, a caster, like actually see the streamer, whether it's a low resolution webcam or a higher one, uh, it's more, it attracts me more to the thumbnail to see what I'm clicking on. Cause like I'm already looking for the game, but I want to see something that like, okay, there's certain physical characteristics that like. When I raid, so if I ever raid a random person at the end of streams, the one thing I'm literally, there's two things I'm looking for one English and two webcam. Hmm. Anytime I'm reading a random person, I'm looking for these two things, English and webcam. People like reactions. But it's never like, you know, you can't. Yeah. I mean, get it, things it started. It's, it's way better to, to, have have to get things started now without. But whenever you are looking to, to upgrade your stream, it's definitely getting the webcam setup is going to be a high priority. As far as the overlay stuff goes, um, a big thing here is you have several fonts on the overlays and i would really like to see that cut down fewer fonts is always going to be better and that's including here you have stream starting soon as two different fonts be right back stay tuned as two different fonts we want to cut down a number of font uses when we're doing design stuff to make things look a lot more unified and just read better color choices are great i like the colors a lot we'll see if we can get font usage down keep to the, keep to the same fonts same thing here. You have the cursive font here, different fonts here, different fonts here. Try to re reduce number of fonts as much as possible. Oh, we have a speed paint. Ooh, this is also from Anperil. And Anperil, I'm going to mute the audio because I don't know what you're using here for your music. DMZA! <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, so, the the app Procreate is really, really cool. If you ever use the app Procreate, Procreate actually has, like, built-in um, painting history. So you can, after you finish a piece, go back and review the speed painting of it or make a speed painting like this without having to record it while you're drawing, which is really cool. That's really nice. All right, you're doing coloring. Your something that was clearly I see you're doing with sheath. shading. Hmm? That was clearly a gray sheath on the sword. This is a different character. It's not the same character, can't you see? <laughs> uh, with your shading, something that I know Janice does that I would recommend trying is it looks like you're doing your your highlights and shadows all at once, just trying to do shading all together at once. But try thinking of shading in different blocks. Like first, start with shadows on the entire character so you understand where shadows are on the entire character and then go back and then do uh, highlights and then lighting on the entire character once so you're always thinking of things in your brain at one thing at a time so how are all the shadows cast on this character where are all the dark pieces where are all the highlights and then where's the light coming down and so doing it all at once helps keep a lot of it unified in your brain so you're always thinking visually the same thing you, you're on the same track and you're not jumping back and forth between i'm finishing up this one piece then i'm finishing up the hand then i'm finishing up the face then i'm finishing up the armor which is like this is exactly what you're doing here where you're putting in highlights to this piece or you're doing all this at once and it kind of just makes things look more unified makes it look like one piece a little bit more
I'm not paying attention to layer usage. I don't know how, how well you're doing layers and what's going on with there. I do see a lot of layers, which is good and helps out a lot yeah. whenever you're going back to doing to editing pieces at a time. Is that a is that a crotch crack? That's why it's pink. Is like a does he have an interdimensional crotch crack? What's going on with his crotch? It's a gem. So it It's the family jewels. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's why it's pink too, right? Oh. What is? I think Speed I also personally would like the smoke coming off of the sword to be a little more transparent, a little less opaque. That's some thick pink smoke. Yeah. Great job. Okay. Look at this. Look at this, Ichi. This is, this is the final piece we have submitted for Make Things Monday. Doggos. Isn't it so good? Here is oh, a geez. here is a uh, definitely completely original, not copyrighted character. Um, I, I, I just see, see three wholesome doggos. I, I see yep. nothing else. <coughs> just, I uh, see nothing goofy about this, Z. <laughs> there... Does that mean two of them are just naked and that we need a we need a censor two of them then? Yeah. Because one of them's wearing clothes, shouldn't all three be wearing clothes? Clearly this is not safe for work. Yeah, this is a commission piece that a friend got for another friend for Christmas. So yeah. It's Janice's Janice's newest commission piece. I love it. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's so is good. Little doggos and Disney. I mean, uh, Goofy, doggos. look, <laughs> Goofy doesn't own a dog, but Mickey does. So Mickey hangs out his friend who's a dog while he also is a dog owner himself, and that's kind of messed up. Is it really? I mean, yeah, yeah. Just like if I, just like if cat girls ever became real, I can't, I can't own cats anymore. Because he, well, like, imagine this, Ichi. Imagine you go out, you go to a bar, you take a nice, you see a nice cat girl at the bar, you take her home, and there are cats mm -hmm. there. What's, how's that gonna look? Like, you, the night's over. She's going home after that. Nothing's happening. I mean, I'm allergic to cats, anyways. So, like, <laughs> well, then wear a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> wear, uh. wear a face mask. Don't breathe in too deep. Jeez. Well, that was cool. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us for Make Things Monday episode one with Ichi Badass. Ichi Badass, you wanna you wanna tell people where to find you and what you're about. You guys can find me. What are you pretty much wait, everywhere? What are you looking at right now? Myself. You have a mirror up there. No. Oh. No, I'm just looking at the sky, man. I actually I'm have just... like the second display above this display. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I have a display here. I got my display here, primary display, which I have you up on here. Oh, you have three and monitors. I also can see myself. Just, yeah. Oh, I need well, a third three monitor. Three monitors with a dual PC setup. Makes life so oh, much easier. I need a third monitor so I can have a dedicated OBS monitor because if I have OBS mm -hmm. dedicated to one, then I can do stupid effects there since I know what size mm -hmm. is going to be. All right, anyways, yeah, tell them about yourself. So as I was saying, you guys can find me on Twitch six days a week after 6 p.m. Eastern time. Pretty much you can find me everywhere. Ichi Badass. Except on Twitter. Ichi Badass TV. Yeah, both of us are Ichi TV Badass on Twitter. Band. Wait, it's, it's, what did you do with that account? What did you do? You posted I, I never used it. I never used it. Yeah. You... Ichi, I've only been using the, the handle Ichi Badass for about 11 years or something. Ever since the PSN leak where they leaked everybody's accounts of like 7.3 million accounts were compromised or whatever. So I made mm -hmm. a new account. I was like, hmm, I'm just going to go with Ichi Badass because all my buddies call me Ichi because my original handle was um, Ichiban Chijiro on the Xbox 360. So I was like, okay, well, Ichi represents the Japanese heritage. Badass is pretty much self-explanatory. 
I'll just go with that. Because you're Asian and you don't have that much of a butt, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, well, Z, where can you. we find you? Uh, you can find me right here, and that's all I'm gonna tell you. If you don't, if if you found this podcast but haven't no idea where to find me, I cannot help you any further. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Thanks for watching, Bye. and don't forget if you want to show off stuff just like we did here for next week's Make Things Monday. Next week, our guest is going to be Chris DeLeon, who is a game developer. So especially if you're working on anything game developer or programming related, we'd love to check uh, your stuff out. Post things in the Make Things Monday channel for next week, which is going to be January 4th, the first podcast of 2021. And 2021 is going to be perfect. Uh, Like I hear in what four days here, all the bad things of 2020 are over. It's going to be null and void. Things are going to go back to normal. Mm-hmm. So we still have to wear masks. Coronavirus right? is instant. There's just no, it just no more. The mm-hmm. fireworks. COVID-19 is not a thing. It'll be COVID-20. Like, you know, a new chapter in all of our lives. Yeah. It turns out the cure for COVID-19 was actually fireworks. And setting off all those fireworks for New Year's just instantly cures the the entire world like a wave. As uh, fireworks, the, the light of the fireworks just destroys the virus in the body for love and and lots of sparkly lights all right sounds that bye